Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Animal Crossing. Um, this time we are actually going to be doing Happy Home Planner stuff. As you can see, I now have options. I decided to do the cafe first. Uh, and this is another one where I had recorded it, but my audio wasn't quite working. Also, if you can hear the dog in the background, don't mind him. He's playing. He's he's chewing on his Kong thingy, trying to get food out of it, which is not in there anymore. But yeah, this is my cafe. It's wonderful. It's cute. This was actually one of my favorite builds to do. Um... I kind of wish that you could edit the beachfront dining though, because that would have been really cool to do, but it's just what it is. So this is my cafe. Today, however, I am going to be talking about um, my favorite horror slash thriller video games, because I feel like it would be nice. Also, just out of curiosity, because um, I've already posted one of these, and this will be the second video so far there, like where... I'm not speaking while I'm playing it, even though I technically was, my audio just wasn't working. So I'm, I'm doing a voiceover now of this stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to know if you guys like this style more, where I just have gameplay going on in the background and I'm talking about something, or if you guys like when I'm talking live as I'm doing things. Um, let me know which one you guys prefer because I will do either. <laughs> um, I'm just doing this because the audio failed, so now I'm talking instead. Also, this episode, as you can tell, will be much longer. We're not only doing the cafe, we're also doing a home build in this video. So, it is quite a large and long video. That's what she said. Anyways, um, favorite horror and thriller video games. These are not going to be um in order in any kind of order so in the last one i talked about zelda games and i did rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite these ones are not that that's not what's happening here these are just i just made a list of games that i liked <laughs> and so now i'm reading off that list <laughs> um so to start with and it's I, I think I still tried to limit it kind of to 10, but if they're series games, then I go into the series for which ones I like. So it's more like 10 game series-ish kind of games. Um, so, to start with, we have Resident Evil series. Um, I really like the Resident Evil series. It's probably one of my favorite horror game series to play. It's just really fun. I haven't played all of them, though. I don't, I don't think I've even played half of them. Um, I really haven't played a lot of them, but the ones that I have planned, played, I do really like. And I remember being super terrified of the first one when I was a kid because my brother and one of his friends was playing it, and I went over to the house to, like, pick up my brother or tell him it was time for dinner or something, and it was, like, the snake part, and it was- I was scared. It was terrifying. I don't remember how old I was. I was probably, like, six, seven, something like that. I was very young. Anyways. Um, Resident Evil 2 really love this game specifically the remake though i never did play the original gameplay but i did watch gab smolders play it and like i'm i'm really disappointed um that they did not include the gigantic sewer spiders in the remake because i was really looking forward to that because spiders i think are terrifying i have arachnophobia so, spiders are absolutely terrifying to me. So, having gigantic spiders in a horror game in a small area that you can't really escape from, like the sewers, and where it's kind of wet so it's har also harder to, like, walk, I feel like that would have been more terrifying than the sludge monsters that we ended up getting in the game. Because those guys were not scary. They were, like, surprising the first time that you encounter them. And I'm sure in real life they would absolutely be terrifying. But in the game, they were pretty not scary and they were pretty easy you literally do like two grenade launchers to them or whatever and then they're dead and that's it so they're like one of the easiest monsters and i i wasn't impressed by them i would have much rather had the spiders that would have been so much cooler but i digress i'm still trying to 100 percent this game but i don't think that i will ever actually get to that um i like this one because i feel like it has a really good balance of like scares thrills and action also, Mr. X is fun. <laughs> He's a little annoying sometimes, but I kind of like that because, like, 
what is it called? The atmosphere. Atmosphere-wise, you can hear him stomping around, which I think is partially what is so terrifying about him. Because you can be, like, doing a puzzle and you're like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. He's coming closer, I can hear him, oh my god. So, like, it's it's really fun to be in that state and then to try and, like, lose him. But it, it is kind of annoying sometimes when he's, like, just staying in one spot and you're like, I literally need to be there, you need to move, you need to leave. So, yeah, um... I like the story. I think it's very interesting. Also, Leon Kennedy is my favorite character in the entire series, so I absolutely love that you get to play as him. Um, I do also like that you get to play as Claire, though, and that you can play, like, two different versions of their story, even though they're mostly the same, but, like, it depends on who you play as first, so I, f I feel like the replay value is really good and it's really enjoyable, um, but like I said, my biggest disappointment was the sewer spiders missing, so there is that. Um, Resi 4 was for a while my favorite Resident Evil game, but I hadn't played it for a long time. Now here's the thing, I still adore Resident Evil 4. Again, Leon Kennedy, favorite guy. He my man. He my boy. So I still love this game, but I did start replaying it on, um, on this, was it on the Switch or was it on my Wii U? It was on my Switch. I did, yeah. I think I started replaying it on the Wii U, because I think I might have it for that, and then I ended up just getting it on my Switch instead. So, it's fun, but it's also really frustrating because of how difficult this game is. Like, it's, it's definitely more of an action game than a survival game, but the survival part comes in because there's not, like, a ton of weapon supplies and stuff so like that's fine but if you kind of suck at the game <laughs> um there's like no leniency for you 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 can screw yourself over if you save too often also if you don't save at all you can screw yourself over if you use too many bullets or too many ammunition of any kind of weapon because there's no stealth mechanics, so you can't just, like, walk around and knife dudes or whatever. You can't- you can't do stealth mode like that. At least not that I have seen. It's not successful. So, because you can't just, like, do that with some of the people, you have to go in guns blazing. So you need to use your ammo for the majority of the fights that you're in. You have to use your ammo, unless you really want to tempt fate and just knife everyone. But if you don't want to do that, you have to use your ammo. And then your ammo goes fast. And then sometimes you don't have enough ammo to beat the bad boss. The big bad boss. The big baddie. And then you kind of screw yourself. And so for me, that's where, like, the, the difficulty is. And that's my only issue with it, is that there are certain parts where you absolutely need ammo. And or supplies to beat the very tough enemies. And if you don't have those, you are fucked. Um, otherwise, I love the story. Hunnigan is also one of my favorite people. I want to see her again, because I love her. Um, I love all of the characters except for Ashley because she sucks. I hate Ashley. Um, but yeah, and it's it's really spooky at times. Also, I have like one of my fondest memories with this game where my brother got really scared. Actually, no, that's the fifth one. Sorry. The fifth one where my brother got really, really scared um, and threw the remote control across the room. So that one was fun. Resident Evil 5 is not in this list though because I hate Chris. I know. Controversial. I hate Chris. I do not like Chris. He's my least favorite. He is my least favorite character. I don't like Chris. I'm so sorry. Controversy, I know. It's true. I don't like Chris. <sighs> Anyways, you'll hear me say that again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you like Chris, more power to you. You do you. I know he punches boulders. I'm not into it. <laughs> I like Leon. Um, anyways. Resi 6 um, was my least favorite of the ones that include Leon, but I still really enjoyed the Leon portion that was in there. Um, I didn't play any of the other characters, <laughs> but the part that was Leon was really fun, and that one was- a this one was way more action than survival, like, by any means. This one was totally action. All action. Um, but I thought it was really fun, even so. So this one is, like, my least favorite of the Resident Evil games that I've played so far, but I thought it was still fun, so putting it on this list. Um, quick thing about Resi 7, I didn't enjoy it, and again, potentially controversial, 
Ethan Winters is another character in Resident Evil that I do not like. I just, I don't understand his motivation for things. In, in the seventh game, he's like, after his wife Mia, right? And you'd think that when he finds her, he'd be like, Mia, thank God. Are you okay? Like, concerned. But instead he's like, Mia, what the fuck? What is wrong with you? You haven't contacted me. Ugh. Like, he's all, he's just, I don't like him. I, and like, I don't understand why he's so aggressive with her in the beginning. I don't know. I mean, I can understand being aggressive with her after she attacks you, but like, he doesn't seem to care about her. So I never understood his motivation because he didn't seem to have any kind of sympathy for her or care about her. That would That's just my opinion of it. I just didn't, I didn't sense it. I didn't see it there. So I was like, why are you here if you don't seem to care about your own wife? Didn't make any sense. I thought the seventh one was not scary. It was gross. That was it. It wasn't scary to me. It was just gross. It was just a really gross game. It was really gross and grimy, not scary. So for me, it doesn't really make it on this list, but I figured I'd mention it real quick. Just controversial, I know, because everyone loves the seventh game. Everyone thinks it's bomb. I am not agreeing with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Resi Village, however, was really fun, even though it had Ethan Winters in it. And I still don't understand his motivation for being where he was exactly. Like, maybe there will be more things, but like, it was kind of the same thing. Like, he's after his baby, so that makes sense. But there were certain things that didn't make sense that he chose to do. I have to play it again because it's been it's been a little while, but like I just remember like the whole time through again just kind of not understanding his character motivations and why he was doing a lot of the things that he was doing. So yeah, that's just me. That's the I just don't like Ethan. Ethan's one of my least favorite characters. And then you have to play as Chris, which was my least favorite part of the entire game, playing as Chris, just because I don't like Chris. So I was like, man, where's my Leon? This is supposed to be the eighth game. Leon has been in every even-numbered Resi game. I, it should be Leon. It should be Leon, not freaking Chris. So I was really disappointed that there wasn't a Leon, especially because this one did take a lot of um, influence, I guess, from the fourth one. But... Whatever. Either way, Village was really, really fun. It it had like all of the good gothic horror elements in it um, that I really like because I love gothic horror. So like it was very, it was a very goth game. They had the werewolves, the vampires, like the whole thing. The architecture was beautiful. The art style was really nice. This game was actually scary um, for me. I mean, not all of it was scary, but it was very scary in parts, especially the house. You all know what I'm talking about the house with the baby um the only thing that i didn't like besides ethan and chris <laughs> was that like you get the four lords and you get mother miranda hey we share a name um but they didn't to me they didn't feel fully fleshed out like i feel like there could have been more notes from villagers or whatever to like really flesh out their characters and their motivations for things and we just didn't really get that, so like we- it felt like they gave us like a taste of what these people were and what they could be and how they came to be, but then they didn't really do anything else with it. Um, so for me it seemed kind of bland in that sense, but other than that it was really interesting. I really liked like the entire experience as a whole. But the boss fights, it, it was just kind of like, look, here's a boss. Oh, you fought the boss? Oh, you killed the boss. Okay, you're done. And then that was it. But it was way more fun than Seven was to me. Um, it's still really disgusting in parts, but yeah, so far this is probably one of my favorite games. I think for me, ranking of Resident Evil games that I've played and that I've liked, um, two, the remake, is still top, top of my list, and then Village, and then after that probably four, seven, and six. So that's, that's kind of how I have it there. Um, next on the list is Corpse Party, which is now on switch actually the the most recent version is now on switch and they added more stuff to it and i really want to get it but i also own corpse party on my pc and i own it on my 2ds so i kind of don't want to get a third copy of it but i i'm also the person that tends to do that where i get multiple copies of the games that i really like and i am curious about the newer editions so corpse party is a um rpg maker style horror game that I highly recommend. It's very, very good. Like, you might not think that it's good, but it is so good. It's so good. Uh, um, so, firstly, it is really good, but it's 
very gory and gruesome. Um, your ears will hate you. <laughs> because the sounds in this game. The sounds are really good. They are like, spot on. Do not watch the anime. Do not watch the anime. Unless you are ready to throw up. Don't watch the anime. Because it is way worse. It's just, it's really, like, it's good, but it's bad. Okay? Because it's, it's only, it's only two hours long total because there's four episodes, that's it. Don't watch the anime. <laughs> I don't recommend it. Um, unless you're into that thing, in which case, you do you. But, like, the game is much more interesting and it's a lot more fun. The soundtrack is really good. The atmosphere, they did really good with the sounds in this game. Like, so good. Um, there's a lot of ways that your character can die. There are really interesting puzzles. There's, like, this whole mystery element that's going on to it because it's about these kids that get... Um, they do this Sachiko Ever After charm ritual thing to try and be friends forever no matter what because one of them is leaving. But something goes wrong and they all get trapped in this other dimension in this place called Heavenly Host Elementary School where a bunch of murders took place. And so now there are ghosts after them kind of trying to kill them and they are trying to escape that realm but they have no flippin' idea how. So they have to uncover the mystery of what happened and how to escape with all of their lives and people die and it's really gross and um the manga the anime and the game all have like different ways that they play out which i thought was kind of interesting so you can get and also you can get multiple endings in the game too but it's still different from the way that the anim the anime and the manga play out so it's a really awesome series and like in general in total and it has different uh, it has different sequels after that, but I haven't played the sequels. I've only played the first game, Corpse Party. Um, but yeah, this one is, like, really exciting. It's really fun. It's super duper scary. Um, and it's pretty long, actually. It's a pretty long game. And there's multiple versions, but I highly recommend getting the newest version on the Switch, because that, that's probably your best bet, because it's the most recent version, so it's probably the best. Um, yeah, and, like, it... I don't know. It's just it's it's really good. I highly recommend it. I don't like I, I have no idea what else to really say about it, but like the puzzles are good. Sometimes I got stuck though, which was an issue. Um but like yeah, it's just it's a really fun game. It feels kinda weird talking about horror games while also watching me make a cafe in um in Animal Crossing. You can see I have a theme of like brown warmish tones in here. Brown and red and blues and stuff. Anyways, on to the next one. Um, another horror game that, like, not a lot of people play. I don't see- I don't think I've seen anyone play this game, actually. I, I really like watching Let's Players on YouTube, also. Um, I've never seen anyone play this. I mean, I've had to, like, look it up to, to find someone who plays it, but I've- the people that I- I've never seen them play it. Um, but I recommend it to everyone. It's called The Coma. There's two games in this series. Um, there's The Coma, and I highly recommend doing The Coma Recut because that is the most updated version. Um, and then there's the coma, is it Twisted Sister? Now I need to look this up. Let us find out. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my thing right now, I'm so sorry. Where is the coma? The coma Vicious Sisters, sorry. Yeah, so the coma recut is the very first one. So. The very first version of it is the Coma Cutting Class. Um, the Coma Recut is a redone version of that of Cutting Class, which is it's just better. They added a few more elements in it, um, so it's just better all around. And then you have the Coma Two Vicious Sisters, which takes place like not too long after the first game, like almost immediately after I think. Um, but it's re it's a really interesting Korean horror game. This has the same sort of um, trope that is pretty common, I think, in, in a lot of Asian-inspired or just Asian-made um, horror games, where a student or a group of students get trapped in another version of their school or just in another dimension, but it, it's typically in their school, like um, The Calling, which was a game for the Wii. That one was the same sort of a thing. This the student 
is in a school and it's in another dimension and you typically like you look outside the windows and there's nothing there it's just a black void and you can't escape all the doors are locked all the windows won't open that kind of a thing so corpse party had that the coma also has this same thing um and this one is where this kid is like stressing about this test and he didn't sleep very well he ends up being kind of late for class because he's studied too hard but he didn't really study and then he ends up going to the class and taking the test and then falling asleep during the test and when he wakes up he's in the place called the coma which is another version of his school in this other dimension that he can't escape from and he doesn't know how he got there or why he's there and there's a different version of someone that he knows who kind of becomes a monster and is hunting him and trying to kill him while he's trying to figure out a way to escape this realm um so again it kind of plays on that trope but this one is like a side scroller kind of a thing and you it's very mm -hmm. stealth based you have to use stealth you have to hold your breath sometimes you have to hide um it's very cool and creepy and this is one that i played a lot in college mm -hmm. like in between classes but it's really really fun it's really fun so highly recommend the coma that's the first game the second game is with another character um but she ends up stuck in the coma also and fun things happen <laughs> so yeah highly recommend both games play them in order though because otherwise it's not really going to make sense um let's see the next series of games is the fatal frame series of which the fifth one was recently released on the switch as well um, which is one of my favorites of the series. Actually, it might be my favorite of the series. It's the only one that absolutely terrifies me. <laughs> like, the other ones are spooky, scary, creepy, but they don't absolutely terrify me anymore, but the fifth one does. So, there are five of them. I've only played three of them. Um, the first one I never played because it was for PS1, I think, and I never had access to it. Um, we didn't have a PS1 growing up. I, not, not that I remember anyways, maybe we got one later, but even so, I was really young, so I was not into horror at all, so I never played Fatal Frame 1. Um, Fatal Frame 2 was the very first one that I played. I played that in high school with some of my friends, and that was the one that kind of got me into horror games, and horror in general. Um, I was probably like 16 or 17, I think, and it was so much fun. It's really fun, it's really interesting and exciting and really scary. Um, the second one is probably, I think, the most famous one because it has the twins in it and everything. Um, but it was just like a really spooky story. And this one has been on the top of my list for a while, purely out of nostalgia. But I think the fifth one tops it. I really do. I really think the fifth one tops it for me. Um, but that one is like, you you play as twins mostly one of them but you play as this the other twin sometimes um and you guys get stuck in this village and then you're trying to find your way out and there's this ghost there's always a shrine maiden ghost who is hunting you kind of um and yeah you guys are trying to escape and you discover the ritual and it's kind of the same sort of a thing where you're trapped and um trying to find your way out mm -hmm ghosts are after you you have to unravel a mystery the the common like strand that's in all of the fatal frame games is that there is typically a shrine maiden and a ritual and something goes wrong and then the gates of hell open up or something happens where everybody in that location ends up dying and so it's like a cursed place um and then your character somehow gets trapped there too or is constantly going back there so that's that's a common theme in all of these games that's kind of that's kind of like the base story for all of the games so it's all really similar with a lot of things but it's also very different with a lot of them so fatal frame 2 though was like the the first spooky game that i played and enjoyed <laughs> so i i do recommend that one um they're hard to get your hands on now though if you have a ps3 you might be able to access them online but really difficult to get your hands on them nowadays because their physical copies are hella expensive um fatal frame 3 is another one of my favorites um and like this one was cool because the ghosts start coming into your house it's about this woman whose fiance dies and um she ends up kind of living with survivor's guilt and she gets trapped inside the manner of sleep 
where there's a bunch of ghosts and other things. And if you stay there for too long, then you end up getting, like, spirited away. So, it's really spooky and creepy, but you're led there by the ghosts of your loved ones. Um, and so it's, like, it's also, like, the one that hits the hardest, though, because it deals with loss a lot and, like, survivor's guilt and all that stuff. So, like, it's a really heavy game, but it's also really spooky because it's the first one in the series where the ghosts are kind of coming to you rather than you going to them. I mean, you still do go to them. When you go to sleep, you end up in the manner of sleep. And same thing, there's Shrine Maiden, rituals, all, like, the mystery that you gotta uncover, all of that fun stuff. Um, but this one was spooky because the ghosts start coming into your house, like, through your dreams. So it's spooky spooky. And then there's Fatal Frame 5, which, for me, is the spookiest, like I said. <laughs> like, I, I'm taking a break from playing it right now because I got- I started having too many nightmares. <laughs> um, but this one was really fun. The, they changed the gameplay mechanics a little bit, so there's- it plays differently than, like, the previous ones, but also very similarly. Um, but this one has to do with- I call it Death Mountain. <laughs> um... I forget what the mountain is actually called, which sucks because I'm playing it right now. I just totally blank on the name because I'm terrible with names. Um, but it's you play as a, a few different characters and all of you end up going to this mountain, the suicide forest that's on this mountain. Um, and there's shrine maidens in this one too, but there's multiple of them. Although one of them in particular, who's always there's always one in particular that's like the big baddie. Um, and it's called the suicide forest because it's very much like this the actual suicide forest um in japan people go there to die um but the reasons why in the game are very interesting and most of the time people are just compelled to they're kind of like possessed to do it um so it's really cool and interesting and you you for this one there's a lot of characters actually for all of them but in this one too in particular there's a lot of characters that we already know from the previous games that are coming back or who are related to characters from the previous games. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about it exactly. It's There's just like a lot of stuff in it, but the ghosts in this game for me are absolutely terrifying. I really, really like the game and I like how they changed the gameplay. Um, and I would super love if with the re-release of the fifth one that it gets enough traction that they either remaster and re-release some or if not all of the previous ones on the switch and or they release a, se a sixth game because that would be amazing Ugh, i would love that but yeah the first and the fourth game i haven't played but i've seen gab smolders play them so she if you want to watch fatal frame gameplay she's the one to go to although i might play the fifth one on this channel i have no idea we'll see we'll see how that goes because it's terrifying to play <laughs> it's so scary especially alone like oh my god um although with the switch and the wii u which is what it was previously released on it's really cool because so the fighting mechanic is you're you're taking pictures of ghosts but you have certain um film that is powered differently so like seven film you have unlimited amount of and it's the weakest film versus like zero film which you get very very limited amount of um and it's the most powerful film so you really want to save that film or like 90 and 60 film that kind of stuff so like the higher the number of the film gets the more powerful it is um seven and 14 are usually like the main ones that you'll use but you can power it up and everything, but it takes, like, s like spirit points from the ghosts, I guess. And it traps them in the camera. It's the, the lore for this thing, this whole series, is just fantastic. Like, it's got- it's so good. The stories are really good. The characters are really cute. <laughs> they're very cute. They're very attractive. And also, they're really awesome characters. Like, it's just this- it's a really good horror game. Like, it's a really good horror game. I, I recommend the entire series, but- the fifth one, especially, just because it's the most, it's the most available one. Highly recommend playing it. Um, my ranking for this, oof, probably honestly, five, three, two, and then one and four. Four is my least favorite. I don't find four to be that scary, but it's also the one that I've like. Besides one, being the one that I've never played, four is the other one that I've never played. But mostly because that one is like japan only it never got a u.s release or even a uk release so it was like only in japan 
So in order to get that one, you probably have to go through a lot of steps just to do that. And yeah, I, I've watched gameplay for it and I wasn't really interested that interested in it. Um, I still think it's really good and I still think it's really interesting, but that that game was also buggy as hell So I I wasn't really that interested in it and like the ghosts weren't that scary the environment was cool But not as creepy as Five is for me or three or two so a little bit different vibe, but yeah four is still pretty good But it's my least favorite um, But that's the fatal frame series. I've talked a lot about that one <laughs> now I probably will try to not talk about it. I think I've talked about it in the past, too. In a past video somewhere. Like a gauntlet video. Um, but yeah, fifth one. Highly recommend. Uh, the Little Nightmares series. So this one is really fun also. Um, this is another, like, side-scroller kind of one. Um, and it took me a while to play these games. I only p started playing them when the second one came out. Because the second one looked really interesting. But I wanted to play the first one. And I had I had the first one. I just never played it. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. So, like, at the beginning it was just because of the aesthetic that I liked, um, at, but I also really loved the character design and the level designs. There's a lot of, like, mystery as to what's really happening, and, like, why Six and other children are so much smaller than the, the adults that they come into contact with. Um, so I'm very curious about that. I've played all of the games, even the, uh the uh, Android version, which I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I played the Android game too, so I got like really into this series after playing the first and second games, I and I learned that there was an Android one, I was like, I'm playing that one too. <laughs> and I did, and they're all really fun. Um, the music is super spooky, the atmosphere is really, really good, the gameplay is also really fun and really simple, um, but they're not like too, too simple, I guess, like it's, I don't know, they're just fun. Um, also, the second game blew my freaking mind, and I'm so curious about, like, the timeline of everything, because, and just the lore, like, it's so intriguing, it's so interesting, I'm so invested in there being a third game that maybe, like, explains a little bit about what's happening, and the thing about this game that's really cool, too, is, like, there's no, there's no dialogue, there's no written text anywhere, so you're, there's literally the story is happening based on what we're being shown, which I think is really cool and a very unique sort of way to go about things. Um, sort of like in Gris or Gris, it's sort of the same thing. It's a little side scroller puzzle game with no no text and no dialogue. So everything is told through the music and the visuals, and I really like that. It's it's really good. So also, it's not a very long game. Neither- none of those games are very long, so it's a series that you could finish in, like, a few days. Um, and it's really fun. So, if you guys haven't played Little Nightmares yet, highly recommend it. It's really cute, and it's a little spooky. Um, Until Dawn is another one. So this one is by Supermassive Games, I think. And people might be more familiar with the anthology series, Dark Pictures anthology series, than Until Dawn, but I don't really know. Um, if that's the case. I just know that the Dark Pictures has been, like, very popular-ish for a little while. Um, also, I'm pretty sure they have the, the Dark Pictures anthology on Steam, whereas I don't think they have Until Dawn on Steam. I'm pretty sure Until Dawn is just for PlayStation and maybe Xbox. I don't know because I don't have Xbox. But I think Until Dawn is console only, not computer. Anyways, <coughs> Until Dawn was, like really awesome for the time that it came out and it's still a lot of fun but like you can tell that it's it hasn't aged entirely well it's a little jankity still a little bit so who is gonna work here oh that's right i think i have no not blue bear who, who did i have working here i can't even remember oh and judy walt and judy i think i chose judy right yeah so sorry, anyways. Last of Us is really cool. It's kind of like a pick your own adventure sort of a game, but with QTEs, because you, you, you make the choices and the choices that you make do matter for the most part, um, because it will affect your relationships with other characters, which also affects how they react to certain situations. Um, and also if you fail the, the QTEs, then people can die which is great. So here, real quick, in the video, 
I'm trying to name it Death Before Decaf. And I guess I didn't press the R <laughs> and I didn't notice it, so now it's Death Before Decaf. Death Before Decaf. Yeah, name it that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a that's a little typo that I had, but I'm gonna keep it. Real quick, we're gonna pause in the talking just to show off my cafe. Beautiful. I really like it. I really like this cafe. I think it's really like warm toned. And it's just cozy, you know? Like, this is a cafe I could totally see myself sitting in. Of course, I would want it to be a little bit bigger, but we're going with Animal Crossing proportions. Nice. Cool, so that's my cafe. Death before decaf. Um, on to Until Dawn again. Until Dawn is also really cool, um, because... So if you haven't played it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Or if you haven't watched someone play it, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But basically, um, there can be a few things that is, that's happening. And like I, I like this because of the mystery of it, too. Because you're not quite sure what is going on. Um, because the, the people in the game are being chased by someone and tormented by someone. But we don't know who it is. So, they just call him the Maniac, I think. So they're being tormented by the Maniac, but we don't know who the Maniac is. There's someone else that's on the, uh, on the mountain with them. But, and they could be the Maniac, but are they? We don't know. But then there's also something else happening, because, like, one of the girls gets snatched by what appears to be a monster. And so you don't quite know what's happening there either. Um, but I, I, I really like how they played that, how they kind of keep you guessing with what's actually happening through some of it. And if you find the right clues, then you kind of, at least con concerning the maniac, you can kind of guess who they are before it's revealed. But like, I don't know, it's really fun. It's a really fun game. I think it was really well done, especially at the time. Um, I like the interview portions at the end and how they change and uh, all, all the deaths that you can get. Like, it's it's just such a, like, complex game, but also really simple at the same time, if that makes sense. So yeah, highly recommend Until Dawn. Um, of the Dark Anthology pictures ones, I haven't really enjoyed them that much. Um, the first two seem like cop-outs. <laughs> Um, just because of how how they ended. It was like, oh yes, it's actually spooky things, and then it's like, nope, it's just your head, or it's just drugs, or whatever. Like, and it's, it's it, it was just kind of, it just felt like a cop-out. It was nothing that was actually supernatural. So, in the third one that just got released, uh, I'm blanking on what it's called. House of Ashes. That one was actually really good. That one was actually really good. I'm a little disappointed about still what was actually happening, but it kind of made sense and it made it a little more interesting, but I did like that it was actually something kind of supernatural, although more sci-fi than supernatural. But yeah, it was still very interesting. But none of them compare to Until Dawn, which is a full, like, full, meaty game. <laughs> I want more of Until Dawn. <laughs> um, anyways. <sighs> what are we saying? You bet. Yes, pay me. Oh, I forgot that's how much I got paid. I have so much pokey now. Okay, anyways, continuing on. So, uh, we also have the Last of Us series, which is one of my favorite, and this is also gonna be kind of controversial, I guess, my opinions of it. Um... I've found that I tend to like a lot of things that people tend to not like, and I like- I, I tend to dislike things that other people like, and that's not- I'm not trying to do that on purpose, it's just how I feel about things. Um, and I don't really notice that that's a thing until I start looking to see how other people feel about it, and then I notice that something I really like is something a lot of other people hated, and I'm like, why- why do they hate it though? It's so good! <laughs> so that was kind of my- the thing that I had with the Last of Us series, um, Anyways, let's go with part one. So part one, obviously, is the first entry. It's the classic one. 
Um, and like so many people liked it and I'm included in that. I, I absolutely loved it. I don't normally like zombies or zombie games, but this one is like different. I guess it, they they had like a different spin on it, so it was it was much more enjoyable than any other zombie themed thing that I I had seen at the time. Um, and like the first time I played it, I was just like really enthralled with the environment and the story and like the gameplay and just everything. Oh my god, the first the first part just made me cry so much. I was I was dead from how much I was crying. I wasn't expecting that either. But it was so sad, and so, like, the fact that it hooked me, like, right away, I was like, oh my god, I don't know if I can do this game, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> um, also, the, cli the clickers are scary as crap. Like, Jesus Christ. Those things are scary. They're still scary, even now, to me. Like, in that little... Uh, is it a subway area? It's, like, slightly underground, and you have to, like, traverse through there. But there's, like, clickers everywhere. Like, I hate that part. I hate that part. I didn't realize it was so early on in the game, too, but apparently it is. I always thought it was, like, later in the game, but it's pretty early on. Because I, I just replayed it last year um, so that I could play part two. And, like, oh my gosh. This game, though. Like, it's just... It's so good. It's so good. I love... I love the entire story. I love the growing relationship between Ellie and Joel. I thought they did that really, really well. I love Ellie. I love her character. I have a sneeze coming. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I felt that one. And like, the way that it ended, like the little cliffhanger kind of ending, where Joel lies to Ellie, and like, oh man, it's just like, <laughs> it was so good. It was done so well. I absolutely love part one. Part one is, part one is its own thing completely. Which obviously leads to part two, which is where it gets controversial for a lot of people. Because I enjoyed part two more than part one. <laughs> I enjoyed part two so much, but also not. <laughs> like it, I have, I have such mixed feelings about part two because it hit me much harder than part one did. It was so much more visceral than part one was. And it felt so much more real and darker than part one was. And spoilers ahead, obviously. But like... I don't know, man. Like, it, it, it just hit different. It hit very different. It was a very different game, even though it's the same series. But I really enjoyed that. It made sense to me to make it darker. I mean, it's a zombie world. What, what, you can't just have it be rainbows and sunshine all the time, you know? So it makes sense, especially with everything that Joel had done in the first game and prior to it. It makes sense what happens in the second game. It sucks, but it makes sense. And I think that's where a lot of people hated it was... They hated the type of person that Ellie becomes, but it makes sense. Like, if you think about it, it makes sense what happens. They hate, um, why am I blanking on her name? Abby? They hate Abby, but, like, her motivations also make sense. Like, the, to me, I'm just like, all of this absolutely makes sense. In the world that they're in, in the environment that they're in, and with the things that have happened to both of them, their reactions absolutely make sense. They absolutely make sense. I wish there were more more of the cult people. That was my only disappointment with that one. But like, both of the games were very enjoyable, but the first game was filled with like more light and hope than the second one, and the second one was just like pure dread and hopelessness and like greediness. There was a lot of like hate and death and fear and obviously revenge. It was like it was just like all the all the dark things. But the story was so good. It was so good. Um, I would have preferred if they switched between, like, Ellie and Abby every other chapter, rather than having Ellie's, like, almost all of Ellie's whole story being played before you switch to Abby, and then they meet back up at that point where they meet. But, like, other other than that, it was, it was really, really good. It was really good. Um, and, like, the thing is, I'm, I'm not usually super into revenge stories but that was kind of like <laughs> to me both of them were the bad guy both ellie and abby were the bad guy because 
it was really difficult for me to side with them. Like, if, if, if I were in that position where either my dad got killed or my father, like, figure got killed, I don't think that I would seek out revenge, personally. That's just not the type of person that I am, so I couldn't really understand Ellie or Abby with both of them, with their perspectives on, like, wanting revenge on each other. But at the same time, I could understand it. Like, for me personally, I couldn't really fit in those shoes, but I get why they're doing it, if that makes sense. Um, I can sympathize, but not empathize, I guess, maybe is what it is. I can understand why they're doing it, but not for me personally. Um, but I like how they dealt with, like, grief and anger, and how it shows the characters coping with that, and how they both learn to kind of let it go and just live with it, live mm -hmm. with what has happened, and, like, the type of world that they're in and what they're dealing with and everything. And, like, I know that a lot of people are not <laughs> gonna share my opinion mm -hmm. with this game, um, but I thought that it was a very, very good, very deep, like, very dark mm -hmm. sort of a game, and because of that, like, it, it, because of how much it affected me, I, I find it very difficult to play. <laughs> I find it very difficult to play that game, which is why I'm like, I, I enjoyed it. I felt like a lot of the things that they did to change it were, they made the game so much better. But it's also, content-wise, very, very difficult to get through. It's, it's, it feels like walking through sludge, in, like, sometimes. Which isn't particularly a bad thing, but, like, it was just a very difficult game. My least favorite part of this entire game, though, it's not Joel. It's not the whole thing that happens with Joel. It's literally that you have to kill dogs. That's my least favorite part. That was the main reason why I quit the game a few times because there would be like certain sections where you're fighting these people and they have like two or three dogs these dogs are coming after you and you have to get them or you can kill their people but even that's really friggin sad like i'm not i'm not down with that i'm not down with any of that i don't want to make the dogs sad and i don't want to hurt the dogs like <laughs> even even fictional animals i'm not cool with hurting them i'm so not cool with animal cruelty at all i absolutely hate that they put that in the game like, it made sense. It was a darker game. It made sense. But I hated that part of the game. That was my least favorite part of the entire game. And I definitely quit it a few times because I just couldn't. I just could not continue on sometimes. I had to, like, pause the game and have a little breakdown because of the fictional dogs I was hurting in the game. I couldn't do it. It's just, it's, it was terrible. So that's, that's, that's absolutely my least favorite thing about this game. And I probably won't play it for a little while for like a couple years maybe like I've, I've been having the urge to play it again but at the same time i'm like do i want to go through the emotional traumatization that is killing fictional dogs because i don't i kind of don't want to do that like is it worth it to play the good story again if it means that i'm gonna have maybe more emotional breakdowns i don't really know i don't know if it's worth it um but yeah so part two i like so much more than part one but it also has its very negative parts that i can't cope with <laughs> so like it, it's so it's so controversial because i love it and i hate it but that's the last of us let me know what you guys think in the comments you probably will anyways <laughs> I, I love both of them though they're both my like i love both of them i want the third one i want there to be a third game and if they do a tonal change again with the third game then that would be cool because there was a little bit of hope at the end with the fireflies and the fireflies seem like they're different now so We'll see how that how that goes. I'm very interested and invested in the story and how it plays out. And if Ellie and Abby will end up meeting each other again because they both have connections with the Fireflies. And if that means that they will finally put the past behind them and like actually work together and stuff. Like I'm so curious to know how it's going to play out. I want to know. I want there to be a third game so bad. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Okay, anyways. <laughs> I just like The Last of Us just gets to me, man. It's so good. Anyways, another one of my favorites is uh, Catherine, with a C. It has a hot pink cover, and it's got Vincent on it, typically, and some other ladies. Um, Full Body is the most recent version. It has three Catherines rather than just the original two, and I believe you can also get that on Switch, as well as PlayStation, and I think it's also on Steam now. Um, could be wrong about the Steam part. I know for sure it's on Switch and it's on PlayStation. But... 
Catherine was a game that came out in like 2009 2010 maybe 2011 i can't quite remember exactly when it came out it's like a decade old now it's it's pretty old but it's so good it's by atlas the same people that did persona and i believe that vincent has a cameo in one of the persona games vincent is the guy that you play as he's got the afro and everything um this is one of my most favorite games of all time. I just remember like really, really wanting this game the moment that I saw trailers for it. I forget who sent it to me, but I think someone sent me the trailer and they were like, check out this game, it looks cool. And I was like, oh my God, I want it. I want this game so bad. Um, for some reason, I was just really drawn to it. Um, I think it was because like the story seemed really compelling and cool and like kind of mysterious and spooky, but there's also like, a, there's definitely like a sexiness to it. They, they definitely play on that. Um, and, but this is one of the games that, like, I got it, and I played it so much. I play, I've played it so many times now, and I've, any time that I ask someone if they've played it and they haven't, I'm like, do you want to play it? <laughs> Can I watch you play it? Because I'm so interested in the choices that they'll make. Um, it's really good. Um, but, like, it, also watching other people play it, I'm really surprised at, like, how many people have trouble with the puzzles that are in it. Like, even on easy mode, and it's, it's some- everyone's brains work differently, like, I'm not trying to- to gripe on them or anything. The puzzles can be very difficult in that game, even I fail at them sometimes. Because everyone's brains work differently with the, the spatial stuff, like, that's the whole puzzle element. It's a puzzle horror romance game, basically. So, this dude, Vincent, um, he has this girlfriend named Catherine with a K. And he is in his 30s, he's like 32 or 33, and he is totally unsure of whether or not he really wants to commit to Catherine with a K. Because she's kind of pushing for marriage and babies, and he's like, I'm kind of happy just how we are, can't we just stay how we are? And she's kind of like, I want more. And he's like, I owe it to her because I've been with her for like 10 years, but also I don't want those things. And so he's struggling with that. And one night when he's at this bar that he, that he goes to constantly with his friends called the Stray Sheep... He meets this ideal woman, who is Catherine with a C. She is the title's person. Um, so he ends up meeting her, and he, like, falls for her pretty hard. But also, yeah, she's, she's like, 10 years younger than he- So she's 22, I think. She's 22 years old, she's got the blonde hair, she's, like, super sexy, and she has, like, the same kind of, um ideas that he has about relationships like why why does it gotta be, why does it gotta be serious why not just have fun in a relationship blah 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 and so like it's it's his ideal girl in full body he also runs into a third catherine whose name is spelled with a q rather than a k or a c so she's she's catherine but they call her rin so he ends up meeting rin who is like the opposite of both of them because catherine with a k is kind of like a ball buster she's really cool but she's also kind of bitchy <laughs> um she just knows what she wants and she's like are you gonna fucking like dude come on like she's <laughs> she's very direct um and then catherine with the c is very like sultry and she's kind of like ah whatever aloof, uh. and then catherine with the q is kind of she's my favorite first of all but secondly she's a little childlike because she doesn't remember stuff she doesn't really remember who she is or where she's supposed to live she's kind of learning all of this stuff um, like, all over again. So she seems kind of childlike in that sense, but she's also, like, the kindest of all of them. And she's, like, the most gentle of all of them. So, I don't know. She's she's my favorite just because I think that she's freaking adorable. And I absolutely love her. And I love her secret. They all have secrets. All of the Catherines have secrets. They've all got secrets. You don't know who is lying, who is not lying. You don't know if any of them are something supernatural or celestial or sci-fi <laughs> so like it's very the story like the personal story between all of them is very interesting and as vincent you can choose who to give more attention to and that kind of plays into the outcome that you'll get um whether you pick catherine with the c catherine with the k catherine with the q or none of them at all you don't technically have that choice, it's based on- that choice happens based on the decisions that you make throughout the game. Um, and then there's also this thing going on where men are dying in their sleep, in horrible, horrible ways. Like, it's- they- they have, like, 
utter terror on their face. And it's... People are like, what the heck? And so there's this rumor that gets started that cheating men or unfaithful men get trapped in this dream. And if they die in the dream, they die for real. <laughs> um, and so you as Vincent end up being in that dream. And so you have to climb these blocks in order to escape. But the thing is, that's where the puzzle element comes in. So that's a whole nother level. You have to do multiple things each night. But like... You have to climb up all these blocks, but you have to move the blocks in a way where you're building stairs up to the top. And so that's where it gets kind of difficult. Um, if you play it on hard difficulty, it's very difficult. But the, the soundtrack is beautiful. It's wonderful. I love the soundtrack. It's one of my favorite soundtracks. Ugh. And, like, the, the boss levels are really spooky, too. So, like, each... You have, like, a few stair levels or climbing levels before you reach like the final level for that night which is where you encounter the boss who can do things to like slow you down or get rid of blocks or do things to the blocks that make it harder for you to climb but it's really fun so really fun puzzle game um it's a really fun like story game too because you also chat with your friends at the bar sometimes and it's like you have like the daytime stuff that's happening and then you have the sleepy nighttime dream stuff that's happening so it's really cool. Vincent has a lot of issues that he's got to get through and you kind of can decide for him or help him decide based on his decisions um, which direction you're going to go. And so it's really, it's really spooky. It's really fun. And there's definitely that element of like, hey, this is a sexy game too in there because the girls can send you naughty pictures sometimes. <laughs> but like, it's really fun. It's a really fun game. I love this game. It's one of my favorites. Um... But yeah, super spooky, super thrilling, super fun. <sighs> Gear Walk is a short game that is so scary that I refuse to play it on my own. Um, like, to me, Gear Walk is scarier than Fatal Frame, in my opinion. It's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> And it's, it doesn't really, it's, it's an atmosphere thing. It's definitely an atmosphere sort of a thing. Um, it feels like a cursed game, which is why I like playing it, but I don't like playing it by myself. Um, and also I'm pretty sure that if you play it once, you can like redo the year walk, I think, but it's, you can't redo it like brand new again. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it remembers. <laughs> It remembers. So it's 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 kind of spooky. Spooky, spooky, scary. Um, but I've played it like two or three times before. Nothing bad has happened to me, so it's definitely not cursed. Um, but it's very eerie, and uh, it's very, very spooky. And it's also really fun. It's a really fun puzzle game. Um, and it's based on, like, actual folklore. I can't remember from where, though. Norway? Or something like that? I can't quite remember. Um, shoot. Somewhere somewhere in Europe. It's like... <laughs> I'm so bad with geography, though. I want to say Northern Northern Europe. But I can't quite remember. Anyways, it's... um, Yeah, it's based on folklore. There's a thing called a year walk where... Um, someone goes on a year walk. And it's kind of like this spiritual journey. But you, you can run into like... Um creatures and or beings along the way and there's potential that you can die during it and stuff like that so like i don't know and i think it's to try and change the future or to change the past or something like that like the even the ritual itself is really spooky and like the story is very limited but it's also really good because i think someone dies and you're trying to prevent that death from happening but I, I can't quite remember it because it's been years since I've played it. But very good, very spooky. Highly recommend it. It's on Steam. It's very scary. For, for me, anyways. Like, again, it's just atmosphere-wise, it's really scary to play on your own. But really fun. It's a really awesome puzzle game. Um, and then Oxenfree, which I have played. You guys have seen me play it. And I do plan on getting back to it. Um, so... The second game is coming out really soon, which I'm very excited for. I don't know if I'll play it right away when it comes out, but I hope that I can. We'll see. Um, I don't think I have to say too much about this. If you've seen my series, if you haven't seen my series, I recommend watching it. Because it's a dialogue-heavy game, there's not a lot of me talking in it. Um, 
So if you don't like my voice, you know, you can just go watch it. <laughs> I don't talk that much in it. Um, but if you haven't seen it and you don't plan on watching it, it's totally cool too. Um, this one's like a fun sci-fi thriller sort of a game with like ghosts, but they're ghosts from like another dimension that they're kind of trapped in. There's a lot of different dialogue options. You can kind of choose which characters you want to be closer with based on whether you want to be nice to them or mean to them. You can be mean to everyone if you want. Um, the replayability is, is really good because I actually discovered recently that you can play it the first time through, but then on your second playthrough, you you realize that you are trapped somewhere. And so you're in a loop. You're repeating the whole game over again, but you can get out of that loop, I guess, on your second playthrough. And so I think that's really interesting, too, that you kind of have to play the game two times in order to get the full story. And in order to break that loop, because otherwise you're just stuck in this loop replaying this whole game but it's not a game to this character that character is stuck in this loop we're playing this whole thing that we're seeing over and over again until we as the game player break it with them so like i do think that's really interesting so oxen free is definitely one of my favorites um i'm really excited for the second one to come out although i don't know when it's coming out so but we'll see we'll see those were like, that was like my list of things, and apparently it wasn't enough. This is a, a nice house. This was one of my favorite builds that I made. I kind of like the simpler builds that I do, where I don't have like too much actually happening in them. They're a little more simple because I, I feel like I have enough elements, I guess. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying me, wa me play this, like watch me play this so far. <laughs> Um, cause I, I enjoyed making them. But, uh, yeah. I will, I will continue with some honorable mentions, because I did make a very long list, and I chose that these, these ones that I already spoke about were, like, the ones that I really wanted to delve into. Um, but, some honorable mentions, the Bioshock series, particularly 1 and 2, because I don't find 3 to be scary at all. Um, Bioshock 1 and 2 I also didn't find to be scary. I remember in high school my friends were like, Oh my god, this game is so scary. It's so scary. And like, I played it with my brother and I was just like, This is not a scary game. This is like a... A spooky game. It's a creepy game, but it's not scary. Like, I wasn't scared. It was- it was exhilarating and it's fun. It's an action game more than a horror game to me. And which I think is why it wasn't scary. Um... But yeah, so like Bioshock 1 is my favorite for obvious reasons. It's the first one. It's the one that like started everything really good. I also really enjoyed the second one though. A lot of people don't like the second one for some reason, but I really enjoyed the second one with the little sisters and everything and the big sister. Like it was just really good. It was really fucking good. <laughs> so Bioshock series, highly recommend. The third one is not scary though. The third one, I haven't been able to play all the way through though because I get um, motion sickness because you're all up in the air and, and just too much stuff is happening. I get too much motion sickness so I can't really play the third one but I know how the series ends. I watched videos on it but even watching the videos I was like I can only do this for like 10 minutes before I start getting really nauseous so can't do it. Um, which might be part of the reason why it wasn't scary to me just because I couldn't fully get enveloped into it because my body was having a, a physical reaction to what I was seeing in a very negative way. But Bioshock 1 and 2, really, really fun. I like replaying those ones. I might play them on this channel. I have them on Steam. I have them on my PlayStation. Um, they're like one of my favorite games to play. I absolutely love it. I love the Big Daddies and the Little Sisters, but it's particularly the Big Daddies. I love them. Um, the Faith series, which is, some of these, actually a lot of these are honorable, honorable mentions because I haven't played a lot of them, but I've seen gameplay for a lot of these, so I just want to clarify that. Bioshock I have played, but there are going to be some, and I'll specify if I've played them or not, that I haven't played. So the Faith series, I haven't played this series, but I have seen other people play the series, and even just watching people play this series, I was really scared. <laughs> like, it's a very, very creepy game. Um, I guess in the first one, you play as a priest who's trying to 
there was like a failed exorcism, I guess, and you're not supposed to go back to the house, but you end up going back to the house to try and complete the exorcism or something like that. Um, and the second one is kind of similar, but not like they're all connected, but in different ways. And it's just, it's a very spooky, spooky, very spooky game series. So I highly recommend um, finding someone who's played that and watch them play it. You will constantly hear me mention Gab Smolders because she's like my number one horror YouTuber that I watch. She doesn't just do horror, but like she plays a lot of horror games. So, and I really like her content. She's really chill. So, highly recommend her channel. Um, she's played a lot of these, if not all of them. And Markiplier is like the other one that I watch a lot. Um, so, also CJU. CJU plays a lot. So, those are like my YouTubers that I watch a lot of. <laughs> And then Game Grumps, but they don't really do scary stuff, so... Yeah. Anyways. Um, Song of Horror is another one. I have been wanting to play that one, because it's kind of like... Um, I guess Eldritch is kind of how you would say it. It's kind of Cthulhu-esque. Um, but, like... This one, I think, would be too stressful for me to play. Because of the QTEs. I don't do well with QTEs. Like, that was my biggest gripe with Until Dawn was the QTE situation, but yeah. Song of Horror otherwise was really spooky, like, to watch, and it was really good. Um, I, I very much enjoyed watching other people play it. Is it is pretty good. Um, the Evil Within, but specifically the second game, because the first one, while spooky, just didn't feel like a good game. I don't know how to describe it. It just had like this this essence to it that to me was like this just feels like a copy of a Resident Evil game and it's not actually that scary. Like the the the, the creatures in it are gross. But it's not really scary, if that makes sense. And the story was kinda like eh. Um The Evil Within 2, however, gameplay got much better, in my opinion. Again, just my opinion. Gameplay got much better. Story, super cool. Enemies and monsters and everything, actually scary. <laughs> it's it, it felt more original and more like it was its own game rather than it was a another game sitting on top of a Resident Evil skin. Um, but, also I'm pretty sure the text is the same for the Evil Within and Resident Evil, like on the box art and stuff. I'm pretty sure it's the same exact text. <laughs> Because I have both of them, and I'm, they're, they're next to each other, and evil is in both of them. And I'm pretty sure it's the exact same text. Anyways, not the point. Evil Within 2, I think, is way better. Um, Fran Bo, which I did play a long time ago. I didn't record it, though, but I've played it. I really like that one. It's very Alice in Wonderland-esque, and I think that they have, like, things where they kind of allude to the fact that she's friends with Alice from Wonderland. Um... But that one's really fun, um, and it's connected to, oh god, Little Misfortune, I think, is the other one that's kind of within that same realm of, of lore or whatever. So both of those, I guess, although Little, Little Misfortune was more funny and dark, <laughs> and Franbo was just, like, spooky and dark, but it was really fun. Um, as for the RPG Maker ones, a lot of people already know about these ones, but The Witch's House, Mad Father, Ebe... Um, The Crooked Man, Misao, those ones were all, like, really, really good RPG Maker horror games. So if you like those ones, and you might be interested- I, If you like those ones, you should be interested in Corpse Party. Because it's- it's within the same realm, but better and bigger. Um, but those are all five really good, like, RPG Maker ones. Some of them, I think, now are available on Steam. But they, these all used to be free, so now you have to pay for some of them. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. Support the peoples. Um, let's see, what else is there? Oh, Inside and Limbo, which are very, very similar to, um, why am I blanking on it? I need to scroll up in this, the Little Nightmare series. So, same sort of a thing, you've got like this 3D side-scroller thing happening. Except for with Limbo, Limbo is just like black and white, but that one has the spider in it and it's really gross. Ugh, I don't like the spider part, but the, like, Limbo came first and then I think it was inside was it i don't know who came first inside or little nightmares maybe little nightmares i can't quite remember but they all have like that same tone to them no no dialogue no text side scrolling you're trying to escape things it's very spooky so 
highly recommend those ones if you haven't played them yet. Um, they're really fun. And again, puzzles. They have like puzzles in it. Um, the last door is like a pixelated one that I started to play kind of and I might end up playing it, it um, for this channel too just because it is spooky and I have all of it I think I'm pretty sure so I might end up playing it but that one I think will definitely be in there it's very spooky um, Kuon Kuon is very difficult to get your hands on it is Fatal Frame-esque but with demons rather than ghosts and it's very spooky although at times can be kind of boring it, it can be like a very slow pace sometimes, but it's very spooky. Um, so Kuon, I do recommend that one if, again, if you can't get your hands on it because this, that's another one that's really hard to get your hands on, then I highly recommend uh, watching someone play it because I'm sure that they've played it before. Um, the Clock Tower series is another one that's really good, and this is, this is, sorry, hang on. I haven't played most of these, except I've played all of the RPG ones, I've played Inside in Limbo, I've played The Last Door. Um, I have played parts of The Evil Within 2, I've played Frambo, I've played all of the RPG makers. So, the Clock Tower series, I haven't played any of those. Not a single one of those. But, I have seen gameplay for it, and they're spooky. Spooky, spooky, scary. Scissor Man is creepy. Um, let's see, who else is there? Oh, also, this is, this is her house. Soleil's house. Her vacation home. I tried to make it beachy. Um, at Dead of Night, I know is is a thing, although I'm pretty sure the creators said that they didn't want the ending posted online, so try and be respectful of that, but I also understand that people haven't been, so you can find a full version of people playing that game with the ending on YouTube. I know you can. Um, how do I know? Because I looked it up. <laughs> but At Dead of Night uh, is really good. It's really, really good. It's really spooky. And it reminds me of like early internet horror games that were on like e bomb not e bombs but like flash games. I don't know. It, it just remind me of of those ones for some reason. Um, Doki Doki Literature Club, of course. I don't think I need to say anything more about that. Same thing with Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't think we really need to say a lot about those, but those two are pretty good. Um, SPC 097B, the original version, not the newest version, because a new version did just come out, but the original version, very, very spooky. That's like, that was like around the same time as Slender Man and stuff. Um, and then Knock Knock, which is just a really interesting and weird horror game with like ghosts and trying to leave, and it's very confusing, but really interesting, so that's another one. Those are my, that's my list. I'm, I'm reading what she's saying now, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, what is she saying again? Oh, right. The Happy Home Network. So now I have the Happy Home Network. And I did end up posting some of my things on the Happy Home Network, but I don't think I do it in this video. I did do that. I did put them on there. Oh, we're gonna call it a day. So that was this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed my little rant for these, <laughs> for thriller and horror things. If you guys have any, let me know in the comments below. Um, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you liked, leave a dislike if you didn't. Leave a comment if you want, particularly what your favorite horror and or thriller game is. And I will see you guys in the next video, whatever it may be. Bye!